And where is the human rights crowd on this? So as we say in Hebrew, Hagolem Kamal Yotzro, the spirit has risen up, risen up against its creator. And we see that the human rights regime that was established by Jews to prevent the Holocaust in response to the Holocaust has now inverted morality and reality and proclaims Israel to be the greatest war criminal in the world. Israel, the only democracy, the only human rights respecting country in the region, is being criminalized and demonized and libeled as the greatest human rights destroying entity on the face of the planet. The country that an embarrassed world had to embrace in the aftermath of the Holocaust is now being demonized in the name of the Holocaust. So the human rights regime that was developed by Jews in large part in response to the Holocaust has now been turned into a weapon in the propaganda war to say that Jews have no right to freedom. And where are the Jews in this argument? I would say that the Jewish people today are extremely confused. We've been told that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, that it is legitimate to have criticisms of Israel, that it is legitimate to have problems with Israel based upon all sorts of ideas of who the land of Israel belongs to. But this is a lie. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is always a little bit tricky. People can always try to figure out a way to tell us that we're just being paranoid. Just tell us, oh, you pushy Jews. Oh, you're so paranoid. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. There is no difference between the two. Because anti-Zionism says that Jews alone among the nations of the world have no right to freedom have no right to self-defense, have no right to a national interest, have no right to defend themselves. And if you don't have any right to defend yourself, and you have hundreds of millions of people calling for your annihilation, you have no right to exist. But we've allowed ourselves to be confused. And so when we hear people say, oh, I'm not an anti-Semite, I don't have a problem with Jews, some of my best friends are Jews, I just don't like Israel, or I don't have a problem with Israel, but those settlers, and you're Judaizing Jerusalem. Is that like New Yorkizing New York? We say, well, hmm, maybe Israel's been doing some bad things. Maybe they're right, maybe we should think about changing our behavior, maybe there's something that we've done to inspire this hatred, maybe if we change a little bit, then the hundreds of millions of people who go to their mosques every day and hear their imams calling for the annihilation of Jerusalem, and the Jewish people will change their minds. Maybe the two million people in Egypt, in Tahrir Square, in Cairo, who said amen, to Yusuf Karadawi when he said that they were going to march on Jerusalem would change their mind. No, they wouldn't change their mind because their hatred, their anti-Zionism has nothing to do with what Israel does or does not do. Just as the Nazis' anti-Semitism had nothing to do with the way that Jews comported themselves in Germany. It had to do with their diseased souls. It had to do with their embrace of evil. Nothing to do with us. And yet we twist ourselves into pretzels, trying to figure out a way to explain away their hatred. 
to make it into something that it isn't, to make it palatable, to make it understandable, to make it something that we can cope with without actually having to do anything about it. And that has to stop. That has to stop. We have to stop trying to develop mechanisms to deny what's happening. That is the lesson of the Holocaust. The lesson of the Holocaust is not never again because we're going to convince everybody else to be nice to us. It's hell no. Don't you dare look at us wrong and don't you talk to us that way and who do you think you are? because these Jews are going to prosper today. We're not going to suffer today. We're not going to allow our children to suffer. We're not going to allow our grandchildren to suffer. And if you think we will, you've got another thing coming. You've got another thing coming because we did learn the lesson of the Holocaust. The lessons of the Holocaust are that good or evil people aren't going to help us unless they think it's in their interest to do so, which means that the people who have to help us first and foremost are us. It means that the people who have to stand up to the haters first and foremost are us, and it's the people who have to recognize hatred for what it is are us. It's our responsibility, our responsibility to be strong, our responsibility to say, yes, of course. After Mrs. Lux Brown was liberated from the Holocaust, what was her first ardent dream? It was that somebody should take care of her. And that makes sense. All of us want that. But at the end of the day, we have to realize that to be an adult and to be free means that we take care of ourselves. It means that first and foremost, our responsibility is not to convince other people that it's their responsibility to care about us. It's that our responsibility is to care about us. Our responsibility is to take care of us. Our responsibility is to defend us. Our responsibility is to make the people who want to hurt us pay a price so that they will be deterred from hurting us. That's our responsibility. And all of us have to take on that responsibility because, as I said at the outset, every single one of us is a survivor of the Holocaust. Because it would have happened to all of us. We wouldn't have been born. Our children wouldn't have been born. Our grandchildren wouldn't have been born if they had gotten their way. They wanted to annihilate all of us. And so we all have to take the lesson that it isn't about convincing other to be people to be better. It's about convincing ourselves to be strong and to take responsibility for ourselves and to say that not only do we expect to be free, we will fight for it in every generation. We will fight for it for ourselves and for our children and for everybody who didn't have it in the past because that's what it means to be part of the Tzor Chaim. That's what it means to be part of Netzach Yisrael Oishakir that we all understand that the eternal nature of the Jewish people rests on every single one of our shoulders. And we all have to take it upon ourselves to do everything in our lifetime to ensure that we remain strong and that every single day we get stronger. And every single day we have to ask ourselves, what did we do to strengthen the Jewish people today? Only that way will we ensure never again, and only that way will we ensure that the joy of freedom is our posterity. I was reading the inscription on the wall when I was listening to you speak. In Sefer Breshit, it's what God said to Cain. Called me achicha. So Akim Elai Minadama. The blood of your brother calls to me from the earth. And it's telling us to live. And it's telling us to fight. And it's telling us to be strong. And it's telling us to be free. And we should listen. Thank you very much. <laughs>